I'm going to be discussing triglycerides and the importance of triglycerides in cardiovascular risk assessment. It, uh, it has been a very controversial area of discussion over the last 30 years, and, and there seems to be a shift in the paradigm between HDL and triglycerides. So HDL was viewed as causative in uh, protecting against heart disease, and triglycerides was viewed more as a biomarker of risk. Now the, the paradigm has shifted, and it looks like HDL is more of a marker of risk in triglycerides, or triglyceride-rich proteins may promote the process. So it's happened over a course of a number of years, a number of studies, and those studies have shown, uh, especially recently, where studies that have sought to raise HDL have been negative, as was demonstrated today with uh, the Accelerate study, just one of a number of studies, but also uh, with respect to triglycerides and looking at both epidemiologic studies and more recent follow-up studies to show that individuals that had high triglycerides uh, above and beyond statin therapy pose increased risk of cardiovascular events, and a recent study that just came out shows in increase in overall mortality. I think we're paying a, a little bit more attention to people with high triglycerides. There are two ongoing clinical trials. One is called Reduce It, the other is called uh, Strength. Those are using high doses of omega-3 that lower triglycerides, and that is being tested in two large randomized clinical trials to determine whether the use of these therapies above and beyond standard of care reduces risk of events. So VLDL and our triglyceride-rich particles. So it's really um, uh, an LDL, HDL, and VLDL, if you will, or non-HDL versus HDL. We're not focusing really a whole lot on HDL. We're focusing more on ways to lower both LDL and ways to lower VLDL or these triglyceride-rich particles. And, and the good news is that to get triglyceride levels down, um, hygienic measures, so lifestyle measures that include a low-carb diet, weight loss if you're overweight, and these are individuals that have high triglycerides, of course. Um, and then there are some cool things you can do from the standpoint of low-carb, adding a little bit of cinnamon, cocoa powder, uh, that can lower triglycerides upwards of 10 to 30 percent with the addition of exercise. Uh, so there are kind of new spices like turmeric can help to lower triglycerides. So there are lots of other considerations in looking at uh, ways to lower triglycerides. The way guidelines are structured right now is that we don't treat triglycerides pharmacologically unless levels exceed 500. So the big question is what do you do in somebody that has levels that are viewed as high, which is 200, but not super high. So 200 to the 450, 499 range. And that's where, since we're not recommending pharmacologic therapies, that's where we recommend improve your lifestyle, lose weight, get to the gym a bit more, go on a low carb diet, stay away from alcohol, except on rare occasions, uh, stay away from high fatty meals. What I think will be uh, particularly invaluable are those two large clinical trials looking at high dose omega-3, uh, multi-thousand patients, and if it could be demonstrated that triglyceride lowering through the use of these omega-3 marine-derived uh, fish reduces risk of heart disease, that would ultimately change the paradigm on how we treat patients with uh, tendency to high triglycerides in the future.